I made this video of a seven-day trip out to Broken Hill that Nick Delane and I did recently, and it's really targeted at other adventure riders who want to, um, you know, do a similar sort of route or perhaps look at some of the tracks that we went on. Day one was from Sydney to Albert, and it was really a case of let's get out of Sydney, get off the highway, and get onto some um, lovely roads. We took the Great Western Highway west, and then once we cleared Lithgow, we got off the highway, and we went onto some lovely little back roads. Of course, passing through Bathurst, you can't really pass through Bathurst without doing a circuit of Mount Panorama, which is always um, a lot of fun. Then we headed out through Devil's Marbles, which is um, pretty spectacular. New South Wales has some incredible scenery, you know, from crops through to paddocks and mountains and bushland. It really is quite beautiful. As we got closer to Albert, we got a sense for just how much rain they've had out in rural New South Wales. For our first night, we, we camped outside the Rabbit Trap Hotel. Day two, originally we planned to do the Darling River Run, but um, because the roads were closed, we've revised that and um, our new plan had us going along the Barrier Highway to Wilcannia and then we went through the Peru Darling uh, National Park. The day started with um, quite a lot of dirt riding and it was, uh, there was a lot of wet roads and, and puddles and, and sort of small water crossings to navigate. The ride from Cobar to Wilcannia was pretty boring, but we covered a lot of ground pretty quickly. And then north of Wilcannia, we hit the Peru Darling National Park, which was um, pretty interesting. And there was a lot of water and there was a lot of mud and a lot of silt. And we learned a thing or two about navigating um, mud holes. And um, the first thing we learned was don't necessarily try to ride, ride around them. You hit some pretty deep silt. We knew going around them wasn't working for us, so we decided to take them through the middle and the wheel tracks, and that proved to be a much better strategy. We got to White Cliffs pretty muddy, but with big smiles on our face. White Cliffs is an incredible um, landscape. It's an opal mining town, and um, we went to the opal fields at sunrise, and. Uh, and it really does feel like you're on um, some other planet or moonscape. We stayed at the Underground Hotel, which is pretty cool. It was um, basically old mines that they've converted into a hotel. So you're eating, sleeping um, underground in a totally dug out sort of excavation, which was um, a pretty cool experience. Day three was from White Cliffs to Silverton. And if you look at our track, you can see a, an unusual little dog leg in the middle of that. And it's sort of funny story there. Um, we'd heard that Muntawinji National Park was worth having a look through. And um, as we looked through at Mount Hema, we saw that there was actually a circuit that ran through there. So we decided to take this loop and run through uh, Muntawinji National Park. Now, one thing that we didn't notice on the map before we went, that I have noticed since we've come back, is the second, there's one part of this loop here, which is actually a, a finer dot. And when you look at the um, legend, it actually says that that part of the track is unformed. Well, unfortunately, I didn't really catch that before we left. 
and um, I'll show you what unformed tracks look like. We hit some pretty strong headwinds um, coming from White Cliffs and um, that combined with a, yeah, a diversion that we had to backtrack on meant we, we um, were cutting it pretty fine on fuel getting into Broken Hill, but nonetheless we did have enough. Okay, so this is the turn off to the Muntwinty National Park and the first part of this is sort of what's called a formed track and it was beautiful riding. And then we sort of, that turned into a partially formed track with some, um, some deep sand in it, which again, wasn't too bad. Um, we navigated the sand pretty well. But then this is what an unformed track looks like. We had a couple of drops on the uh, deep sand, you know, just slow speed um, lay downs, no, nothing at all major. It's all part of the, I guess, the fun and the games of um, riding in, in the sand in the outback. And then um, the wind turned into a dust storm, which was, was kind of um, it was kind of cool actually. It was, uh, it was sort of eerie riding through into the dust. It didn't really bother us. Um, once we got to Silverton, we decided to explore and just go and um, find some tracks around. This first um, location was one that uh, Nick knew, which is uh, it's actually a film set where they they shot a Coke commercial way back called Sky Surfer. And it was amazing just riding out to the, in the wilderness and just seeing this uh, iconic hut there. Ooh. On the way back in Silverton, we, we just explored. We just um, looked for tracks that looked interesting and, and um, went off, off piste. I think Nick was contemplating whether he could jump this. And then we found this beautiful track on, on Hema. Um, Hema showed a, just a nice four wheel drive track off to the left and we decided to follow that. And um, we had an absolutely stunning ride up through the hills as the sun was getting lower on the horizon. And then as the sun got really low on the horizon, we saw these amazing sort of shafts of light appearing. So we decided to head up towards the lookout and just sort of watch the sunset. And it was really quite spectacular. So we made way to Silverton Hotel, which is where we stayed the night. And we had a, a lovely evening there by the fire. We met the, um, the owners of the, the pub and had some good chats with them. And of course, um, a great pub meal. Day four, this is probably um, my favorite day. Uh, we decided to explore um, Kinchiga National Park. And um, if we zoom in here, you kind of have a look at the, the planned path that we wanted to go through. So we, we rode down Menindee to Menindee Lakes, and then we actually saw this sort of track on Hema that went through the National Park, and it stopped at the old cheering shed. And then we actually set a, tr a path down to Puncari but on the west side of the Darling River. And it looked like an amazing path, but we ended up not doing that track all the way down just because there was quite a lot of water around and we got um, put off by the, lo the lo some of the locals talked about this horrific mud called Menindee mud. After saying goodbye to the locals, it was a perfect day for riding. So put on some midnight oil and just Okay, after refueling at Menindee, we went into Kinchiga National Park and by far this was the highlight of the trip for me. It was just beautiful, beautiful tracks, 
beautiful um, scenery and location. And um, what we found though is um, as, we, as we went along, we actually found that the road had a barrier across. Now we took that to mean that they didn't want four wheel drive spoiling the adventure bike tracks. So we, we just skirted the barriers and we rode in, it's by far the highlight of the trip for me. We were just riding through this old, old disused road in the national park and there were kangaroos everywhere and the, the scenery was desolate but yet spectacular. This aerial shot will give you a good perspective of just how remote the, um, the ride was, but just how beautiful. We stopped at the old um, shearing shed, which is just amazing. I love shearing sheds to walk through. So after the shearing shed, we decided not to go down the old Puncari Road, and instead we did a beautiful loop up along the Darling River. Um, uh, just along, there's all these gorgeous campsites there. And then we went down the main road from Manindi to Mungo. Our campsite in Mungo was just gorgeous, remote, scenic, kangaroos all around, tons of wood. Day five, we went to from Mungo to Hilston and we followed largely a uh, GS Safari um, GPX route that I found. It's, it's wildlife. Took a bit of a walk around Mungo National Park and had a look at that, which is a pretty spectacular sight. After refueling at Balranald, we start. We hit the the Hay Plains, and um, beautiful riding, really lovely roads initially, but then the roads started getting wetter and wetter and more chopped up, and and we started getting a little bit concerned about um, about the roads, but still nothing seemed to really stop us. Okay, we need to just back up a bit and I want to make sure you saw that sign. Road impassable due to wet weather. We thought, well, we're on adventure bikes, nothing's going to stop us. But cue epic music. Nick started riding even more erratically than normal and he was having real difficulty in actually keeping his bike upright and moving. This may not have been Menindi mud, but I'll tell you what, it's pretty similar. It's the, it's the craziest mud I've ever seen. It wasn't just slippery, it actually stuck to the bike. It stuck to everything, your shoes, the tires, everything. So, so Nick, what tires are you running today? Slicks. <laughs> <laughs> Nick was really struggling to keep his bike up and keep it moving.
And if you just watch that again, watch what happens to his bike here. He starts to move and the front wheel totally locks up. The mud had locked up the front wheel. Happened? Oh. Running along here. And it's just uh, clogged up the front wheel. The front wheel's just turned into a solid brake. Unbelievable. So Nick and I spent about 30 minutes with spanners just trying to pull the mud out from underneath the uh, mudguard. We decided we weren't going to go forward. Um, there was rain coming, big storms ahead. So we, um, we turned around and we headed back to Hay. After that horrible grey mud, we then found some of the red mud, and um, I went. I went and sort of slid off the road. Just had a had a, a low speed drop in the um, in the paddock on the side of the road, and again there was just no traction at all on this mud. You couldn't steer. So after several attempts, we decided we were going to go back and stay the night in hay and just rethink our plans. So day six, um, the original plan was actually to ride dirt pretty much all the way from Hillstone to Blaney, um, which would have been fantastic. And then day seven, we'd planned out a, a fantastic ride, which was a dirt loop through um, Hills End and Safala to Lithgow, and then a ride home. Unfortunately, we got the weather forecasts and this Arctic blob had moved in and it was literally snowing throughout route forward. So finally we decided to, um, it was too wet to do the dirt roads in the last two days, so we decided to do a wide detour via Dubbo and head to Sydney um, from the north so we could bypass the snow. It was a bit disappointing that we couldn't finish the trip on dirt. It was a beautiful but cold ride home and um, we'll come back out and do those last two days of dirt riding again.